The symposium that we did this week, um, my purpose for this whole symposium was to educate natives all over the U.S. and Canada about the emerald ash borer. And the emerald ash borer is this invasive species killing all of the ash trees in um, Michigan and 14 other states, including trees in Canada. We had a lot of participants here from Canada, Wisconsin, Minnesota, New York, and together um, I had presenters come in from Maine who discussed preventative measures for the emerald ash borer because they don't have it in Maine yet. The emerald ash borer is an invasive beetle that came in from Asia. Um, it was probably here in um, the 1990s and nobody knew about it. It wasn't discovered until 2002. Um, and it's decimating the ash trees in Michigan and around the Great Lakes. And we first heard about it from Kelly Church, who told us what it was doing here um, to their trees in Michigan. And, um, you know, we became pretty alarmed because, you know, that's our tree that we use too. And um, it would just be really devastating for us um, for that beetle to come to the state. And we've worked um, the Maine Indian Basket Makers Alliance and Basket makers in our community have worked really hard um, over the past 20 years to pass this tradition on and keep this going. And we've been really successful in producing new basket makers and, um, and having markets and this beetle could just come in and wipe out you know, all that work that we've done and, and take a tradition away from us. To sustain this in the future is number one, we have to teach everybody about the emerald ash borer and tell them what's going on so they um, can have the concern. And then um, number two, we have to collect um, seeds is the number one thing we can do to save it. I had a speaker come in from Canada who talked about seed collection and the work they're doing up there um, at the Akwesasne Nation. We were in Mich Michigan at the time and collecting what we thought was going to be our lash last batch of black ash seeds. We are collecting the seeds and thinking, well, after this year we've done enough. We've got to collect the seeds for about 18 years and had them all planted. We were, between Les Benedict and myself, we were, were guesstimating that we've planted or are responsible for 60,000 black ash seedlings within the Haudenosaunee communities. And uh, we thought that, well, we should be able to relax now. And then that same year, we found out about the emerald ash borer and realized, no, our work's just beginning. Because that emerald ash borer could have a really negative effect on, on all uh, First Nations people or Native people across uh, the whole range of black ash. And then a BIA um, forester from Minnesota, where they have the most black ash. But now I think we're getting a lot of uh, agency bureaucrats understanding are the message that we've been trying to give them for hundreds of years and that all living things are important and they're all worth preserving and protecting. And the light of black ash is being seen as not a very important uh, tree. Um, even if we didn't have basket makers, it's still very important because it occupies a special part in the environment in these wetlands. And there's danger in a lot of these areas if we were to lose this tree cover is going to change the whole ecology and hydrology of these areas. What I, what I think in the end the, the biggest uh, thing to come out of this is better cooperation between the tribes and the government. And in light of the emerald ash borer in Michigan, we've lost um, over 60 million ash trees already. They quit counting, so we could be up into 100 million already or more. And um, we stand to lose all of our ash trees first. So by documenting um, the process of making the baskets, by teaching people how to collect seeds, and um, by working with the youth. And it was just this year that I realized how important the youth um, was. They've always been an important factor, but this year I realized that if we don't reach those youth now and get them interested in learning every single aspect from harvesting to the seed collection and replanting, tradition might not be sustained. And the reason for that is is because we're looking at losing an entire generation. I really like what my mom is doing with the, the programs that she puts on and how far out she reaches. Like she goes to Canada and all over our country and um, had so many different reservations and so many different tribes and every time we go to a new one we realize how few people actually know um, anything about it when it used to be such a 
large part of the culture just, you know, mm -hmm. a generation ago, I guess. So I know that it's only going to get, the numbers are only going to become fewer mm -hmm. um, the older I get. And I want to make sure that uh, I keep it going, I guess. So that's my own goal for the future, basket weaving. <laughs> After the ash trees are gone, we have to take time to replant maybe two decades here in Michigan before we can be begin replanting. And we don't harvest trees till they're over 30 years old. So we're looking at a minimum of 50 years in between times. So it's, um, I think this conference was very critical in bringing us together and all of the natives of the Northeast share the ash tradition. It just doesn't belong to the Anishinaabe in Michigan, but it belongs to all of us in the Northeast and all the natives in um, Southeast Canada, everywhere the black ash grows.